Hello and welcome back to the last episode of uh, the War of the Chosen campaign 2 against the Overlords. Tabcat has done a phenomenal job in prepping the last room. Um, as far as I can see at least, uh, we haven't used a lot of material. Let's just double check it. Uh, lots and lots and lots of items are ready. Oh boy, he has not used anything. Damn, very good. Very, very good. And we only used one charge of uh, the med kit as well. So can't complain about it. Plus Hogbite is on full focus. Anyways, it's going to be do or die. Uh, we are going to fight through three avatars. So uh, now is the time to leave a comment down below and let me know how you think this campaign will end in a victory or a crushing defeat. Uh, the last mile rests on my shoulders. In case you enjoyed the series, don't forget to check out Tapcat's channel. Make sure that you leave a couple of likes and good comments there as well, specifically on the in first one of uh, this uh, series. Uh, it never hurts to go back and do that because it boosts the algorithm and the engagement. And finally, before we jump into it, if uh, you truly enjoyed what you've seen and want to support uh, the channels, then consider subscribing or even better and that uh, is something that you can uh, every single one of you could do try to tell a friend about the campaign one person uh, is enough if you uh, recruit uh, them and we would have a nice little inflow of new viewers at least parts of them that stick around do a little bit of advertisement this is how you can say thank you for the hours and hours of entertainment anyways enough uh, babbling from my end let's get going and win this campaign Okay, <clears throat> let's go. So, let's take a good think around what we want to do. We might want to get uh, XQ6 up here. That way he can continuously shoot, 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 shoot. And with a blaster bomb he has enough reach, plus we also have a Mimic Beacon if need be. Then, on top of that, uh, we're putting Jim potentially close by. That's not a bad idea either. Now, Commander Avatar and uh, Spectre could sit in the middle. Trojan can move around. And Mad Dog might as well um, stay around here because um, he can act twice and also place a couple of mines. So let's first of all get everybody into a good position as per the usual we're trying to stay out of uh, vision range from the avatar and his two disciples are there no need to ask twice. Um, i would like to put specter sort of here that should not trigger And Commander's Avatar this should also not trigger. <clears throat> Good. Good, let's get into position. XU6 soon will move up. <clears throat> and by up I mean up there. Have a good flanking angle over here. <clears throat> Moving to position. And Maddock. For now, stand here, and then we're going to move in a bit deeper. <clears throat> good. End of turn. And we're going to start this adventure <coughs> with getting XQ6 in position. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, they replaced the Archons. They actually expect us to buy any of this. Okay. Well, I do have an idea. How about Spectre moves up? Thank you. 
How about continuing to grapple up? Then into a nice little frostbite, that way the avatar <coughs> cannot move away. And is also being drawn into the open, but is very good. Good. In terms of just <coughs> planting a couple of mines, <coughs> that's a free action. And uh, this here is going to remove the entire armor of uh, the avatar. Fantastic. That's good. Hogbite. I would love you to create a ghost because uh, that's what we re really need in the meantime in the meantime this here is not going to kill anyone yet Okay, we're maybe just going to use one uh, teamwork. Okay, that's a nice uh, shot. I like it. Hand over advanced teamwork, and then we're going for Overwatch ourselves. Uh, just in case someone spawns here, we do have all of the traits, Sentinel, we can get two overwatch shots off if needed. Let's just get... Oh no, uh, we don't have reset because we are not... Um, okay, well... Mildly impressed. We can still fix it. Advanced teamwork for the win. Little 10 points of damage, that's a good start. Over here, we're starting with Ghost. Gets three focus. No chance to critically hit. Oh, but we do have a shotgun. Okay, well, in that case, I do have a plan. Hit him. And then kill. We're going to get a reset. And we can use that for Overwatch. Moving slightly up, we're in an okay position here. I'm just wondering, you know, why not? Getting more bodies on the field, normally I take an Archon. 
How about we're just taking you? Good, we're moving over here just in case some, uh, something spawns there. I'll tank the right hand side and on the left hand side we'll, we'll kill everything. Oh, chrysalids. One. And no second attack. Interesting. No, there, there was a second attack. I see. Okay, cool. Okay, very well. I hope that gets focus. Okay, back. Short pause. So, we had a double kill. I like it. And we're going to parry. In the meantime, let's do a couple of things here. For starters, why do you only have one movement action? That is unacceptable. These count as psionic beings. Uh, that would kill him, unfortunately. The ghost. I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, we're overwatching here, going down here so that we can freely overwatch to the left. The next avatar should be spawning up here. And since we know that already, we might bring you to here and put this in here. It's a little preparation in case someone or something is coming down that way. Good. Brace. Yes, please. One codex down. Second codex down, unfortunately we do not have um, the ability to just do in the zone serial or whatever else you would call it. They got away with it in the proficiency classes, makes it more balanced, but at the same time it is unfortunate. Good, I think one focus is fine to be spent and what we're wanting to do is get you right here. <laughs> Very nice. And guess what? Trojan is ready to dissect you. Like there's no tomorrow. On the move. Eighty eight percent crit chance, I'm sure if that is enough. I guess it is. That's definitely not enough. I mean, we could run and gun for turns. There are only two avatars left and I need a jump <coughs> for either of the avatars. 
So might as well do this, combined with 100% uh, crit, which means see you very much later. Alligator, alligator. Good. Assuming that the next pack comes from over here, I'll just put the avatar there. Overwatch. And they decide to spawn the avatar on the back. Ah, not needed. Let Hogbite kill, uh, kill both of them. Thank you. Unfortunately, all of the spawns happen on the wrong side. Which is too bad. Moves to here. Only gun uh, gets one target in line of sight. Incendiary bomb. Oh, come on. Nothing? Good. At least that works out well. There we go, Avatar. That's what I was looking for. Let's get you to a different position, shall we? Anything is fine. <sighs> That's not perfect. But it's not that bad either. Just making sure that all of uh, these guys are being well taken care of. In the meantime, Hopbite is just helping over with teamwork. The avatar is still not at the perfect spot. Let's try again. Anything on the left hand side, by the way, would be fantastic if you could come over. Not so an interesting place as well. That's actually a very interesting place. Um, we do not have a free reload, so might as well reload now. And set the avatar up for a successful kill. Now you're in a good spot. to 11 good crit chance 
Um, but you know what? We don't even need to do that. We can might as well just do our strike. There we go. Cool. No problem. Just in case anyone spawns up here. That's a solid kill. Very good. Then we're going into full cover. Bladestorm will kill that other guy. And are you telling me the blast bomb actually has a maximum range? Wow, okay, that's a uh, new info as well. We have kill zone. Might as well, just in case someone spawns up here, put kill zone up. right here Trojan we get a, a move action gain a partial action after turn ending attack on a flanked or stunned target Okay, so we can definitely get that. Target neutralized. Hair trigger free action. Well, that's now becoming dangerous because I don't want us. Uh, to stay anywhere near someone but what we could do is we could move like this that's getting us out of uh, range never mind okay oh <laughs> quadruple archon all right let's see if my preparation my little trap card my uno reverse card has worked out well Oh. <laughs> and the second of <laughs> the second explosion uh, took him. Untouchable. I wonder why there wasn't an overwatch. Oh, never mind. Oh wow, Templar goes killed in one go. That's nasty. Yeah. Let's try.
There you go, No Man's Land is paying dividends. He just decides to kill his friend out of uh, pure panic. A to 10. Oh, that's going to be a nice little hit. Cool. And given that we are, have Salvo and that it is near the end, um, this is a big fat frag out. But it might might be even two kills. The reason why I take the front one and not the back one, which would for sure be two kills, is because I want to move over. The next avatar is going to spawn in a second. And I want to be there. Let's go with the Lancer first. Easy kill. Easy life. That guy is burning. No psionic abilities for you, my friend. Good. When we're killing this sector, we're getting an extra action which we can then use to shoot. And that I think we could use in order to continue marching on or just head trigger our way through it. When your miss shots deal five points of damage, there isn't really that much that you need to fear. Last avatar. The airbender. The last avatar. Okay, bring it on. Bring it on, my dudes. They increase the avatar packs. But that won't help them either. Oh yeah, avatar already is eating a lot of shots. Your psionic compatriots are not going to help you here. Oh, wow. They one shot. That Crusader is a tough cookie. <laughs> and for once, oh boy, that was a harsh crit. And for once they are attacking us and not just random mind control slash support creatures. Ah, the blade storm would have been too good.
Good, let's hit let's start hitting that avatar. Going a little bit more into a cover position. Avatar jumps. Avatar continues to jump. Nice. Okay. And listen, although it is not completely the typical hog bite show, it's still one. Wait, we shouldn't uh, say that. Not so fast, hold my beer. Uh, can't invert anything in a, in a reasonable distance. All right, since it is not the typical Hogbite show, might as well do it in Hogbite uh, fashion, which is slash to the face. And that's the end of uh, the two against uh, the Overlord campaign. Guys, it was fun. It was great fun. Uh, to my knowledge, it's the first and only uh, collaborative campaign of XCOM 2. As you can appreciate, XCOM 2, whoa, as you can appreciate, XCOM 2 is a difficult game to pull off with a co-op mode. Uh, the flip-flop and switch between Tabcat and me worked well, although the whole production just due to uh, sending save game files back and forth and back and forth uh, took about half a year. I hope that the quality and the result was well worth it. Big thanks to Tabcat first and foremost for uh, sponsoring it and uh, coming up with uh, that idea and starting the challenge on his uh, channel. We're going to do an epilogue and kind of an afterthought together where we're talking through just how we felt the campaign went. We talked a bit throughout the campaign, but I think that uh, will be a good last video, which will appear on his channel and maybe part two on my channel. Um, so a second thought, uh, just immediately after uh, the campaign in terms of co-op modus, although it took very long, it was definitely a highly, highly interesting journey. We ended up having each our own teams. He was more kind of on the Reaper side with the technician and uh, the whole hacking. I uh, used to do the hog bite show with uh, more brute force, multi-shotting and so on. I think both of it uh, very different uh, play styles, uh, equally legit. And we ended up, I think, with only two um, soldiers le uh, lost, which on a legendary Iron Man campaign with weaker classes is actually a good result if you think about it. It's definitely um, up there with the good campaigns. As always, towards the end of uh, the game, the classes and just generally the loadout became ridiculously strong. So I haven't even used a lot of healing in the final uh, room. Matter of fact, we took besides that one crit on the commander avatar, zero damage whatsoever and uh, killed all of uh, the avatars. So. Uh, from a result perspective to be expected once you power up even the proficiency classes uh, will outshine what advent can do but there were a couple of really cool psi uh, enemies which i will go through in the uh, aftermath with tabcat and then finally uh, topic number three so to speak the the whole uh, journey of going through a campaign together also had a few interesting moments because I wasn't always in control of what we're going to research next. Sometimes you were simply forgetting uh, to reallocate resources. It was not just completely on top of your mind all the time. So there is something to be said uh, that campaigns that are happening in a co-op nature where you flip-flop uh, are more difficult than uh, simply playing it yourself, of course. So uh, that was that. Uh, the two uh, successfully 
uh, prevailed against the onslaught of uh, the overlords. That was the idea of the campaign and that uh, very well functioned. We're going to take a look at the end stats in a second. I thank you for making it that far. If you're still here, that means you were dedicated throughout uh, the entire series. And might as well, if you're that dedicated, pick me up on my offer at the beginning of uh, this video to subscribe and leave a comment, uh, plus do a bit of a mini advertisement. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's take a joint look on the, uh, on the uh, stat screen, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay, final screen. So we got a little bit more missions than the average. We lost a few missions. Yeah, I think, yeah, three is about right. Uh, tough timers specifically at the beginning. About on average, a little bit lower on the flawless missions. Definitely killed more aliens. Uh, we lost more soldiers. That can't be right. That must include hacked enemies and, and other and other entities. I am pretty sure we only lost two soldiers, one on Tepkite's side and I lost a rookie relatively early in the run. So that would be two, uh, whatever that count is. Successful shot percentage, we're dead on. We're close on the mission timer, so it was difficult, killed or chosen. I don't know what global points are to this day, but whatever. Covert actions, a little bit less than normal. Uh, we did have very uh, high level soldiers. Interesting that we only had four research breakthroughs. Same roster size. Uh, that is not only legendary, so typically you are higher on the, uh, the values. We got some bloody missions. Uh, so 600 days in the Met uh, Bay means a lot. Number of kernels, oh, that's great. Hack rewards uh, earned, that's good as well. Rest pretty much uh, bang on. Beam weapons were fast. Plated armor, uh, we were even faster. It's interesting. Magnetic weapons, very far behind, but then in beam weapons we caught up because we went for weapons relatively early. And then we got the entire world, which is good. Uh, rest is pretty much uh, dead on. All right, cool. So that's it from the Two Against the Overlord campaign. Finally, let's wrap it up and go to the epilogue. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope we catch you in one of the next runs. Take care and bye-bye.